Okay, I can't get away with anything. <laughs> That's all right. I shouldn't be able to anyway. So a number of students have asked about this issue. This was in the uh, uh, last posted example there where we did the uh, master detail page using the patient details showing all the related appointments and lab tests and so on. So in the uh, posted code, I basically had this, you know, uh, with a note that you can do this in one query. Uh, and basically what I was doing was doing the first link query, just getting the patient alone, then getting the appointments and the lab tests, right? But I've had several students say, well, I'm not sure how would I do that in one query and what's faster, right? That's what it comes down to often is, hey, what's faster? Well, first of all, I have to apologize. It wasn't actually till I started to test that I noticed something. Silly me, I forgot the dot includes in these other queries, right? So when we went to get the appointment, I forgot to do the dot include for the plaint just because we actually show the name of the complaint. So lazy loading was going back for each appointment record. It would run yet another query. So if I had five appointments, it would go back and run five separate queries to get the name of the complaint. Very, very silly of me, right? Which is why you'll notice I did some performance testing. Uh, and I found that uh, using this approach uh, without the includes as I originally posted the code, the SQL to reload this page typically ran at about 0 0.04 seconds, right? Giving a page load time of around 0 0.05. Now these are, you know, do it a million times, you get slightly different numbers every time, right? But this seems to be pretty consistently about the numbers I was getting. Adding the dot includes, now of course the difference will depend a lot on how many records there are in appointments and lab tests. But you can see that uh, just, you know, with a few of the simple ones that I had to test with, with four or five appointments and a couple lab <laughs> tests and so on, it immediately dropped down considerably, right? So with the includes, the SQL took anywhere from, as I said, actually I had it as low as uh, 0 0.17, I think even 0 0.15 one time. Uh, Often it was like 0 0.2, you know, 0 0.02 in that range, but usually it was under the 0 0.02, and anywhere from the 0 0.027 to 0 0.03 for the actual page load time, right? So pretty darn quick. They're definitely much faster than without the includes. But you know, students were asking, well, how would you do it in a single query? So I have two approaches shown here, uh, so I could comment out this one, right? For example. And uh, we could go to approach number two. So here I'll just, it's just easier to see with the color coding, right? So I'll take out the comments. So here is doing it in one query, right? Where we're using the dot include. So basically we go and we get the single patient still, including the appointments and lab tests. The problem is dot include doesn't allow you to carry on and say, okay, dot order by inside here. It's just not allowed. You can't do that. So how do you actually sort the appointments and lab tests in date order, which is what we wanted to do? Well, this is showing the technique that I can go and get all the data in one query instead of three queries, right? That'll speed up data access in the database. But then I actually have to go through and sort. But I can do that right within the patient object itself. I can just reassign access patient.appointments, right, because we included it and do a, a link query, just ordering the collection of appointments that are inside the patient object and store that back in appointments. And do the same thing for lab tests, right? So although we only have one query, we're gonna increase the amount of time it takes to prepare the page because in memory then we're sorting these records, putting them back into the collections of the patient object. In the end, about the same speed, more or less, maybe even a little bit slower, <laughs> right? Uh, one reason could be because, just a quick look, this is the type of query it generates, right, with all the includes, okay? Just, you know, you can tur turn on that little line of code I put in there uh, before, showed you how you can have it log all the SQL commands that it generates right to the, uh, uh, down to here, right? So you can see it's a fairly big complex query obviously uh, lots of joins and so on as opposed to the three separate simple queries we would have had for this approach here right so that's one reason maybe why we don't get the huge difference even though we're sorting in memory but you know these numbers performance numbers are very unreliable right a lot depends on how many records there are in each collection and you know uh, so many other factors as well and uh, so you know really don't 
output of auto stock, I can't say there's any measurable for sure difference between any one of these three methods. But just to show you as an alternate approach, right? That's one way you could do it. Uh, just I have a note here that uh, going from approach one to approach two, you do have to go into the actual details and change one thing uh, in the details view. Uh, instead of getting the appointments out of the view bag in with approach two, they're actually in model, right? So you just change that to model and the model contains the appointments. Okay, so that's something that uh, I'm just going to put it back so I don't get into trouble, depending on how I run it right now. All right, so that would be the second choice, and I'll post this version of the code as well, but I'll just comment that one out. Approach three is still using a single query, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a data transfer object, a view model object, right? So let me just uncomment this to make the... <laughs> I recommented it. Ba -ba -ba -boom. Dum, 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 dum. Okay, there we go. Now, for this to work, what I needed was to create a, a view model, right? So over in the view models folder, I have this here. So patient detail view model, I called it. Notice it contains three things. An individual, uno, one patient, right? Object, an I enumerable collection of appointments, and an I enumerable collection of lab tests. So the idea is I'm going to generate and populate all the data I need for the entire view into this one view model and send it to the actual view model. So back in the code, notice that we're, when I say return view, I'm naming a different view because there was a lot of changes to make here and I did not just a simple quick one. So to go back and forth for testing between this approach, it would have been major changes to the details view. So I just copied it, pasted it, and uh, called it details view model, right? The main difference is it is based on instead of on like details, let me go to the top, boop, 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 boop. control home, be faster. Okay, it's based on models.patient namespace. This is view models.patient details view model, the one that we created right over here. All right, so that's the kind of object that the view is expecting. And the main difference you'll see is unlike here where we just say model.ohip and model.firstName because the view model contains a single patient, okay, and we have to go model.patient dot all over the place, right? Another reason why a lot of editing changes going back and forth between this approach and that approach. But when it comes down to the loops, right, then it's just model.appointments because our view model object itself contains that I enumerable collection of appointments and away we go. Okay, so just talking there about the differences in the view, but let's look at the actual controller code then. So, so what we're doing here is I have a, a link query. Now I find this type where we're uh, projecting into a uh, different class rather than one of the actual model objects that we have to work with. I often find it's easier for me to write it as the uh, query syntax expression, right? Query expression syntax. So here I'm going from P and patients and doing my dot includes. I'll talk more about that at the end. Uh, where, right, we have the one. I'm going to, instead of selecting the patient, I'll select a new patient view model, right? Where then I can populate its properties. So the patient is just my little P, right? And then the appointments. Now, because of how I'm doing it, I can apply an order by, right? So this is a separate link query from p.appointments, order by, and away we go. And then the same thing here from L in p.labtests. So those are both getting, because we included it, they're all in the patient, and away we go, ordering by de in descending order, and that's it. So we populate our view model object with the patient, an ordered list, alpha, uh, not alphabetically, but in, in reverse chronological order of uh, appointments and reverse chronological order of lab tests. So by the time we're done, we return this single view model object, right? Just checking that it's not, that the patient is not null, okay? And then we actually return it specifically to the details view model, and that's our view model object that we created. So it's a different approach using a data transfer object, very common approach. Note, uh, performance, about the same. <laughs> I couldn't find any measurable difference between it and approach number two. And in fact, you would think so, but the query that this generates is basically identical to the one uh, from approach two, right? And what was very interesting to me, I just was curious, so I tried it. If you take out the dot includes, <laughs> no difference. The query generated is identical right? 
So clearly what's happening in that case is because we're pulling this data, it eagerly is loading it into the patient as well. It doesn't wait with lazy loading to go back. So really adding dot include, you know, maybe good for clarity, uh, but it really in performance and in uh, how it actually constructs the query makes no difference in this case, which I thought was an interesting point to be aware of as well. So, you know, uh, approach three here, the data transfer object, as opposed to going and getting it with our includes and after the fact in memory sorting it, right? No measurable difference in uh, performance between those two. Possibly my first approach, as long as I remembered the dot include here, was, if anything, maybe the most efficient of the three, okay? Even though there are three queries, they're very small, easy, fast to execute queries. And in the end, this is every bit as fast, maybe even a little faster than the other two approaches. So don't feel bad about, uh, you know, doing this type of thing. You know, you can spend hours and hours uh, t timing this, timing that, using the SQL query profiler and so on, and you might find that in the end, it really doesn't make a lot of difference. <laughs> but don't quote that to anybody else. That's our secret, okay? All right.